boy. I gotta go ghost. She see I got power, now she do the most. And then that gangsters get mad, make a post. Bet you I win with my back is the road. Rockin' off white, so she think I'm the pole. I jumped in the water, I knew I would float. You think you the best, and I'm killing the goat. Niggas was broke, all we had was hope. Bro hit the plug, all he had was dope. I get the last life if he think it's a joke. Say she got a friend, well I want them both. Ain't going to jail like me up in the booth. Talk out your mouth, then you might lose a tooth. Bro to your score, all he know is shoot. I'm, I'm dropping the tip, I think I lost my roof. Don't listen to him. Hey, welcome back to the Oregon State Dynasty, ladies and gentlemen. We are back today, not with the preseason, not with the offseason. Game one, baby. Let's get right into it here. So excited for this matchup between Oregon State and Syracuse. That's how we're kicking things off, of course, at my alma mater. But before we do that, we're going to take a look at the sliders here. I changed up everything. Well, not everything, but most things to make it tougher. Uh, speed threshold down to zero. You saw right there. I set the penalty numbers at specific numbers as well. And you take a look at the user and CPU numbers right here. These are the Jared 21 sliders. I'll put the link for a video where I got these from um, in the description below. So check that out. But I'm just trying to get some more competitive games this season and continue to make it tougher on myself in these games. So I'm hoping these sliders bring us that. If not, I'm going to continue to tinker with them. And we'll see how it goes here in game one. But moving on, we got to look here at the All-Americans. we got two in the offensive side of things. John McConnell at running back. James Parker at wide receiver two very talented skill position players and you see a couple of the other Pac-12 guys on the list as well here the, these are guys we're going to be seeing throughout the season USC Stanford uh, there's Dwayne Patton on the defensive side for uh, cornerbacks only three first team All-Americans this year kind of a low number for us we typically dominate these lists with nine ten guys every season but I guess the uh, media or whoever makes these lists probably the media is sleeping on us here in the preseason uh, not a lot of people in fact nobody in there for second team so we only have three All-Americans this season if you've been here for a while that's a pretty stark contrast to seasons past but uh, all conference lists we do dominate and we, we continue to do that here this season in 2026 James Parker McConnell in there Edgar Hoskins in a tight end Aaron Wright at left tackle and Dwayne Patton again in the secondary so not a a ton of guys pretty evenly talented throughout the conference this year but still pretty good representation Amir Moore gets on there as a 93 overall center we got Vince Watkins at right outside linebacker and then Joel Stewart at corner so I think that's Joel I think that's Stewart's first time ever being on one of those lists so good for him uh, Watkins back on there McConnell is your preseason Heisman favorite let's see if he can live up to those expectations he was on that list quite a bit last season so he's used to that take a look at the Pac-12 Predicted uh, predicted standings here. We're projected to come in first. Washington second. Cal third. Stanford four. Oregon fifth. Washington State six. That's typically how it shakes out every year. Uh, on the south side of things, USC, Arizona, and yeah, again, that's usually how it how it looks on the US uh, on the south side of things. That the USC side of things. Preseason polls, as you know, we are the top uh, top team in the nation. We're going to take on Michigan in week three, Tennessee in week two next week. So those two will be interesting matchups, and then we have. USC after that as well. They're ranked here in the preseason. We got Washington in the top 25 to open up the year, so good for them. Take a look at some of the other Pac-12 teams. Cal is hovering around the top 25. They were there a little bit last year, but kind of struggled down the stretch. There's Syracuse, 35th, entering the season. Team we're going to play, of course, in the season opener. So a nice opponent, like I said. Put some respect on the orange name. And Stanford is the last Pac-12 team we're going to cover there at 46th. So pretty good representation from the conference as a whole. Now we take a look at the game preview. Uh, Lee is rolling with us here. Lee, Cor uh, Lee Corso? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lee Corso. Uh, A plus, A's, you know, pretty much everywhere. So, you know, we have the talent advantage, I think, in this game. Now Syracuse enjoys the home field advantage. So being in the Loud House, being in the Carrier Dome certainly plays into their favor. We take a look at our schedule. Uh, their schedule, excuse me. You got road game at Toledo, home game against Notre Dame. That'll be interesting on the stretch. But, of course, kicking things off with us, the Oregon State Beavers. And like I just said, we got Tennessee, Michigan, USC, and UCLA on the horizon. So a lot of tough games to come. 
Here's some of the returning production. Got a nice running back there. Jacobs, about five yards per carry. Good receiver as well. 55 catches, over 800 yards, and defensively a couple of pieces. Quarterback looks relatively new, probably a backup, so we'll see how he, how he performs today, assuming that Rice will be the starting guy. Here, let's look at our numbers. Also, you know, Copeland was a backup last year. Played some spot time, but John McConnell's the leader of this offense, and I'm really excited to see how he plays and how our offense will play as a whole. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into game one. I hope you guys are excited. Smash that like button. Hit the subscribe subscribe button. Let's do it. Let's take a trip out to New York. Picking things up in the first quarter, Syracuse with the first possession, and we come out and we begin that defensive dominance. Brian Jude with the tackle, the free safety making a play. Come back on second and 12. Another strong tackle in the flat by the defender brings up third and long. Can we get off the field on our first possession of the game? Yes, we can. Aaron Bates off the edge, gets the sack, and brings up fourth down. Syracuse has the punt. We take one more look at it here. Nice little swim move off the edge. He takes Joe Evans' spot there at defensive end and makes a nice play. Here's Carl Wilson in coverage, uh, punt return rather. Bounces it outside, evades a tackler, gets over the 50 and over the 40 before he's finally brought down around the 35. Great starting field position. First play goes to John McConnell, the preseason Heisman favorite. And oh, baby, you saw the moves right there. Looks a little slow, but he still has those moves. It might be because the running back ability slider is a little bit lower. But you see Copeland off with the throw on second down. We come back on third handoff to McConnell again, and he moves the sticks. So first down and 10 on a drive. Here's a little RPO pass to Brewer over the middle, and he makes something out of nothing. Second and one, jet motion, handoff McConnell right up the gut, and he gets a decent gain, picks up the first down. Bring it back for first and ten, going pass, and we have a wide open Curtis Pennington inside the five. Leads to a John McConnell walk-in touchdown, the first of the season for Oregon State. So 7 nothing back on defense here, midway through the first quarter. Syracuse Go going up. long on second and eight, but deflected in the back end by Jared Hemphill. The strong safety comes across the field and makes a play, brings up third and long. So third down and eight, Tuttle's good over the middle. Let's picked that. off, Dwayne Patton, the preseason All-American. Right place, right time, and he makes the play. He did that all of last season and makes a big one right there. Puts us in great starting field position once again. Can we cash in? We start out with a pass down to Brewer on a drag. Decent gain on second down, first down rather. And Copeland with a strong take up the middle to move the sticks. Set us up inside the five where McConnell's going to get another opportunity. Nice hole off the right side. Bounces it in, runs through three tacklers, and he's in for the second touchdown of the game. 14-0 Oregon State. Both scores by John McConnell. Nice hole by Mike Waters, the right guard there, clearing it open for us. So... All Oregon State early on. Nearly a pick right there from Joel Stewart. We got to have those, but good coverage on the back end by the preseason all Pac-12 player. So third down and eight, the situation now, and Syracuse moves the sticks. Dan James on a flood route. He, uh, he exposed us the entire game. You guys will see a little more from him as we go. There he is again right there. Check down, gets over midfield, and picks up another first down for the Orange. Syracuse really needing some points here. Play action all day to throw and the quarterback finds James again in the second level of the defense a little coverage lapse in the back end so the orange piecing together a nice gotcha, drive bitch. here and it comes to a little bit screeching halt we'll say right there as Casey Williamson makes a play on the speed option so second and 14 Syracuse off schedule but it doesn't matter Holt open over the middle on a slant he comes right back gets those 14 yards back and it's a first down for Syracuse powerful run up the middle from Walter Jacobs so second and inches inside the five. Rice finds James again on the tight end delay. And he gets Syracuse on the board. So 14 to 7. Nice response by the Orange. All right, so what can our offense do? We got the 14 to 7 lead. We've had two drives, but they both they both been in short, uh, you know, good starting field position rather situation. So can we drive the length of the field? Nice slant route there, beating the blitz. Good recognition by Copeland at the line. 
Another check at the line of scrimmage. Going to send Parker and Pennington deep this time on second and 10. Looking for maybe a deep shot with single high safety coverage. Nobody open though. So he makes the smart decision and checks it down to Edgar Haas. Gets a chunk there. So third down and five. Convertible situation. And we're going to try to run for the first down. Will it work? No. It does not. Unblocked defender right in the backfield and a massive hit on McConnell. Take one more peek at that slow motion. Oh, man, what a hit. But that would end the first quarter. So 14 to 7. It was, you know, we had all the momentum early on. Syracuse kind of rallied and made it a game there. And they got the ball here with a chance to tie it up. And it's off to a strong start as Jacobs runs up the middle, breaks a tackle, and gets 10 yards. Comes to a halt, though, as Syracuse picks up a false start penalty on the offensive line. So second and five now. Big penalty for us. They come back with a play-action pass, and he throws that out of bounds, but there's another flag on the play, and we return the favor with a pass interference penalty. I'm not really sure why we got that pass interference penalty. I uh, didn't really see it anywhere you know, there, but nonetheless, we get the stop anyways. Terrific tackle in the backfield. There's Aaron Bates again, his second tackle for loss of the contest, and it gets us the ball back, sets us up pretty well. Nice run by Copeland here on first down. little misdirection. I love that play. We're going to try and use that one every game if we can hand off mcconnell on the counter on the ensuing play and he gets inside the syracuse 40 with a healthy gain and putting together a drive another dink and dunk for parker he gets off the press and makes a grab on the slant so we're moving the ball piecing a good drive together now can we finish the drive oh this is vintage john mcconnell bounces it outside on the option gets a healthy gain it would lead to a first and goal situation it became third and goal can copeland punch it in he cannot he's wrestled down and he gets hurt on the play so a lose-lose situation for us. We have to settle for a chip shot field goal. So a 10-point lead, but Copeland is hurt. We're going to have to check back in on his status as that becomes available. But not a good look there. Bruh. Forced to settle for three in the red zone. Nearly a pick there from Dwayne Patton. That would have been a pick six, but he drops it. So another dropped interception and another missed opportunity for our defense. We need to start catching those. Here's another missed opportunity. Knew exactly where the route was going. Got stuck on my fellow defender there. So Syracuse converts a th uh, third down situation. And Jacobs comes right back, runs through Jude, and gets a chunk gain on the ground. A couple of big ones for Syracuse. We get to him this time, but he escapes, avoids tackles. He's into the second level and finally brought down at the 25. But a big gain for Jacobs. And there you see the injury update for Copeland. Out for two weeks with a bruised shoulder not good so that means he's gonna miss the rest of this game we're gonna have to put our backup quarterback in and you know at the same time Syracuse offensively is starting to get it going and cut into this deficit they would do so right here as Rice goes through the open gap and walks in for an easy touchdown so Oregon State up 17-14 now Syracuse having some answers we don't get scored on very we don't get touchdowns scored on us very often on our defense but Syracuse two for three on drives and two touchdowns making it look easy can we respond we got our backup in the game Quentin Brown he thought we'd come out running and hand off to McConnell nope we're coming out passing let's get his confidence up so a nice pass from Brown he comes back and misses a wide open receiver on second down you're going to get that a little bit with the sliders and the fact that he's supposed to be a backup quarterback right but McConnell gets nine so third and one manageable situation and we convert it's Chris Hall the sophomore true sophomore making the play we go back to McConnell nice trap there's that burst that we saw all of last season and we see it right there so second and six nearing Bruh. the end of the first half Haas wide open on the corner route but Brown off with the throw definitely a missed opportunity there third and six we can still get it it's a design sprint out all the receivers are open but we throw to the wrong one hit the wrong button and again we have to settle for three points here or do we no it's a fourth and two and Dana Dimmel wants to go for it he's gonna roll the dice and it's a keep for Brown. He gets up and over the 10, over the line of scrimmage, or the first down marker, rather. Move the sticks, baby. First and goal. Coming out with a stick play. Keep an eye on that clock. 14 seconds to go. Couldn't get the pass off. Had a receiver open. So now second and goal, 14 seconds left. Have Howard open underneath on the drag. And he's able to get to the two, but we have to spend our last time out and kick the field goal going into halftime. So definitely not the way we wanted to end the half there. Had some great A opportunities, but wasted them. But we still have the lead, 20-14. to 14. Let's see if we can clean some things up in the second half. Before we do that, though, we take a look at the first half stats. Pretty even both ways. Both offenses getting some things going. We've dominated time of possession, and we haven't turned the ball over. So those are positive signs. Let's keep it going here in the second half. 
All right, starting out on offense, and we're coming out with a little misdirection here. Fake the sweep. We go to the screen, and my offensive line blocks this so well. We did miss one block there that would have probably led to a touchdown, but definitely going to be working the screens a lot more in the future because my offensive line is athletic enough to make plays on that. We stick with the same personnel set, get a nice setup play, and a healthy run by McConnell. Now back to the pass. We get out of that personnel set. We get man-to-man -man coverage. We beat the blitz, and Parker makes the catch. Uh, James Parker, more from him coming up. Don't, don't even uh, forget about him. I'm pretty impressed by what Quentin Brown's been able to do off the bench. He looks comfortable out there, but not on this play. A nice strong safety blitz sent by Syracuse. We had receivers open, but couldn't find the open receiver. You see him come free down the middle there. He gets the sack, so again, that's the third consecutive possession. We settle for a field goal, and luckily Cedric Fuller able to knock all three of the opportunities through. So a nine-point lead, two possession. That's, that's where you want to be. Here's Dan James again. You guys are not going to forget that name absolutely exposed us at the tight end position but third down and two big gotcha, play bitch. here by brian jude cuts off the end around brings up fourth down strong play by the free safety of course jude filling the shoes for jaron taylor who's off to the nfl and playing on sundays now and he had a spectacular game i'm excited to see what he can do going forward but back to the offense here mcconnell with a couple of runs probably had a touchdown on that one if we didn't cut it back in Kind of boneheaded decision there. So second and three, we know we can pick up a third down and three. So Brown says, hey, let's take a shot, right? Parker gets off the press. The throw is perfect. He tries for the one-handed snag, and he drops it. So we have to come back on third and three and pick up a highly stressful situation. But again, we do pick up the third down. Quentin Brown's been pretty efficient with his legs, and he picks up another third down situation there had a fourth down conversion earlier in the contest uh nearing halftime there but here's parker missing a tackle breaking a tackle and another leaping into the end zone touchdown oregon state i told you not to forget about him he was gonna make more plays and he absolutely dominated the syracuse secondary and spearheaded our offensive attack you see the little uh zigzag zigzag get off of me get off of me i got reservations for six baby and he gets there Spectacular play by the preseason All-American. Oh, nice tackle by Matt Thomas, number three there in white. Don't forget about him. He's a linebacker that's going to see some time this year. It only is a matter of time before he starts seeing the field. I like him. But second and nine, Syracuse now trailing by 16. Nice hit by Dwayne Patton on the far side. Oh, yeah. So third and four. This is a big play. Syracuse needs to get back in this thing, and they'll need this first down to do so. Brian Jude right. recognizes the screen, but drops the pass. That would have been a pick six. We dropped so many interceptions and a couple of pick sixes as well. That was one right there. But end of three, 16-point lead, looking good. We pick things up in the third quarter with a third and 12. We get the matchup we want with the fade, but the throw is there. I'm not really sure if Brewer didn't see the pass or what the deal was. So we miss out on an opportunity to kind of put the game away there. Strong coverage by Hemphill in the zone, his second deflection. I'm liking him at the strong safety spot. He's looking real good along with Jude on the other side. Speaking of Jude, we're going to try to blitz with him here on third down and three. But Syracuse gets the first down courtesy of Jacobs. So the Orange are staying alive. Definitely need to score some points here to get back in this thing. So another third down situation for Syracuse. And again, it's Brian Jude getting in the backfield along with Jesse Bailey to team up for the tackle and get another big third down stop. That was the difference in the second half was we were getting stops on third down. We'd have to get one here on fourth down as well. So fourth and three, can we get off the field? Rice drops back to pass, has a receiver open on a quick slant over the middle. Just a little bit too late to get there. So Syracuse moves the sticks this time. They come back yeah. with a jet sweep. Somehow we miss that tackle with Watkins around the edge. And a nice chunk gain for Dan Martinez on the ground. So Syracuse putting a drive together. All for not though. Look at that tackle by Jack Atkins. Nobody picked him up. We take one more look at that. Absolutely destroys the Syracuse running back. Nope. And that got that got the orange behind schedule. Quarterback forces a throw in there. Lundy, great coverage, knocks it down. So fourth down and 10, perhaps the play of the game right here. We put it away with a stop. Going to rush four, target the near side edge. Syracuse goes with a screen pass, and we have nobody out there. But somehow, someway, Jacobs is short. We get the ball back. And now third and 13, we ran two run plays. They both got stuffed. But we come back with a screen, and again, it is perfectly blocked. We get all the blocks we need this time, and John McConnell is gone. Send the postcard, baby. You cannot let the Heisman favorite get out in space. He will make you pay every single time. And, well, he's got to give an assist to his offensive lineman here. Three pancakes across the board. Get him some maple syrup, baby. 
Beautiful run, beautiful play. Great call, too, especially on third and long. We were just trying to play it safe and keep running the clock and, and see what happens there. But, hey, we're going to have to run the screens more because that could be a big hitting play for us. So last ditch opportunity for Syracuse. Under three minutes to go, trailing by 21 points. Nice ping pong action there between Watkins and Michael Smith. Brings up fourth and three. Stop here and the game is over. Syracuse elects to pass and they convert another one. Dan James, there's that man again. Probably the only player on Syracuse's team that had somewhat of a pulse. Nice diving catch there by Connor Carter. So third and two. Syracuse obviously going to go for this. They don't get this and they do not. It's Bates off the edge again getting to the quarterback. So fourth down and two. Play of the game. Rice going to go under center. Jacobs in the backfield. Straight drop. Five-man drop. We only rush three. Goes Let's to the back of the end zone. And it's deflected by Harrison. The true freshman free safety makes a play. That would do it as Oregon State takes the win 37-14 in the Carrier Dome. John McConnell, your player of the game, and he definitely earned it. Didn't have a whole lot going on the ground, but he was a dual threat guy. And in the second half, we pitched a shutout. 17-0. Great adjustments on both the offensive and defensive end. And how about Quentin Brown coming off the bench, replacing Jacob Copeland, and having a good day. I mean, 8-for-13, uh, 195 yards, two touchdowns, only sacked once as well. That, that's a strong performance. Could be a quarterback controversy going forward, but here's a look at the rushing numbers. McConnell was the leader there. Parker led us. Actually, no, it was McConnell leading us in receiving, courtesy of that screen pass, but Parker had a heck of a game. Five for 95 and a touchdown. That highlight reel touchdown he had, that was that was nice. You guys are probably going to be seeing that on a, a new intro here as we get uh, further into the season, but a strong effort from everybody, especially the offensive line. A lot of pancakes to go around. Ryan Jude leading us with 10 tackles. Vince Watkins with seven came in second. And we, we had a lot of, you know, we had, a, we had a lot of contributors today. And that's what we like to see out of your defense. See the TFL numbers here. Uh, a pair for quite a few people. We, don't, we did only have one sack, but I was really impressed by how we defended the run. Aaron Bates had that lone sack. He had a really strong game. Uh, the lone pick going to Dwayne Patton. Whole lot of deflections. These are pretty much all dropped interceptions. Some of them are dropped pick sixes. So we got to clean those up going forward. We can't afford to leave points and opportunities on the table against Michigan, Tennessee, and USC. But... Really happy with Cedric Fuller in the kicking game. Steven Carter was good in the punting game. And return game was pretty good as well. Not much for Patton and Wilson to do, but there'll be threats going forward. Quick peek at the team stats. Only 262 passing yards. Uh, total offense, though, 397. So about 400. Even both ways. Pretty happy with what our defense did. Forced a turnover. Dominated time of possession. All recipes for how we like to win games at Oregon State. And that would do it. So 37-14. Really strong performance here in game one. Came out, did the things we needed to do. A little competitive, a little bit of a challenge. And you know what? Hey, we learned a couple things about our team today. And that's what I'm pretty happy about here coming out of game one. And we'll just continue to grow and get better and better through the weeks. I was actually a fan of those sliders. Let me know if you guys like the sliders. I might continue to tinker with them a little bit here and there just so I can get the most realistic thing and the best games. I'm really seeking competitive contests this season. This was certainly one. Great time going out to New York and playing against my alma mater. They got a pretty good football team. They could be ranked by the end of the season, but we are on to Tennessee. Before we do that, I'm going to film a recruiting episode, so be sure to come back uh, very soon for that one. Hit the bell for the post notifications. That way you never miss a post. Before we go here, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hope you guys enjoyed game one. I will be back very soon with the recruiting episode, and game two will be headed down to Dallas, Texas to take on number six, Tennessee. Let's go.